The following is a class on the Bhagavad Gita as it is. First chapter, text number 44. Given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Recorded on July 31st, 1973, in London, England. Translation Alas, how strange it is that we are preparing to commit greatly sinful acts driven by the desire to enjoy royal happiness. Ahavato mahatvapam kattam babusitabhyam jadraja sukhalovina antam sajanam uddhata So, sometimes uh, Arjuna is accused, Bhagavad Gita is also accused, that there is violence, there is violence. Bhagavad Gita is full of violence. Yes, it is full, full of violence, the war field, but uh, here the Vaishnava thinking, Arjuna is thinking, <coughs> that it was uh, arranged for his uh, Rajya Sukha, Jad Rajya Sukha Lobe, Rave. It was arranged for the satisfaction of Arjun, so that he could enjoy the kingdom and the happiness there. Actually it was not so. It was arranged by Krishna for his satisfaction, not for Arjun's satisfaction. So that is the difference between ordinary work and devotional service. Devotional service and ordinary work, they look almost equal. Just like we are living in this house, the neighbors, they may think that some people are living here, chanting, dancing, uh, we also dance, we also sometimes sing and eating, they are also eating. So what is the difference? They may think that what is the difference between devotional service and ordinary work? It looks almost equal. Therefore people misunderstand that Bhagavad Gita is ordinary warfare and violence. But it is not that. It is arranged by Krishna because to fulfill his mission. His mission is paritranam sadhunam vinasaya chadrishtika. That is his satisfaction. Not origin satisfaction, not anyone's satisfaction. It is his plan. He comes, he descends on this planet, in this universe, just to establish the real purpose of religious life and to kill, to vanquish those who are opposing the real purpose of life, human life. That is his mission. Simultaneously, two things. Puritranayam sadhunam vinasaya chadrishtika. So, sadhanam ahovato mahatpapum kattam babusitabhayam Jatrajya Sukhalevana, Hantam is Sajanam Uddha. Sajanam means kinsman. So kinsman does not mean in a higher sense only my brother or my sister or my father or my uncle. No. Sajanam means all living entities because one who hasn't got Krishna consciousness, his ordinary consciousness, material consciousness, he cannot think in terms of sajana, my kinsman, all living entities. He cannot think. Actually, everyone is our sajana, because if God is Father, as Krishna claims, aham bija pada pita, 
he feels the Supreme Father. Not only he claims, at least any fine religious system claims, God is the original Father. Uh, that's a fact. Aham sarvasya prabhava matta sarvam pravartate. Everything has come from him. He is the Supreme Father. Uh, if Krishna is the Supreme Father, he is father of everyone. Sarvajoni Shukantya. Uh, in all species of life, in all forms of life, they are all our sajam, kinsmen. How it cannot be? Because Krishna is the original father. This is Krishna consciousness. Uh, therefore, a devotee of Krishna does not uh, want to commit a little harm to any living entity. That is uh, Krishna consciousness. Vidyavinaya sampanne brahmani gavi hasvini suniti to sapati cha pandita samadarsan. Pandita, one who is learned, is samadarsan. Equal vision. Not that. Uh, that Krishna is equal vision. Uh, that picture, Krishna, is embracing the cup. He is not only embracing the gopis, but he is embracing the cup also, cows also. Uh, some other sense. For Krishna, the gopis, the cup, and the cows, or anyone in the Nāvan who has come to serve him, they are all equal. Somebody wants to serve Krishna as cup. Somebody wants to serve Krishna as cow. Somebody wants to serve Krishna as gopi. Somebody wants to serve Krishna as cowherd boy. Somebody wants to serve Krishna as his father. Somebody wants to serve Krishna as his mother. These are the different mellows, different tests. Every living entity has got his own test, how to love Krishna. But the central point is to love Krishna. Krishna is a reciprocate. He has no discrimination that here is gopi, beautiful girl, therefore I shall love her more than the calf. No. Krishna is not so partial. Similarly, Krishna's devotees also, because he has Krishna consciousness means he has got now in minute quantity Krishna's quality. Therefore, he is also equal to everyone. He thinks everyone sajana, the same, member of the same family. Uh, it does not matter if one has become ant or one has become elephant. Uh, the living spark, the soul is the same dimension, either within the ant or in the elephant. Uh, this dimension of the soul we have different, several times discussed. Uh, one ten thousand part of the top of the year. Kesagra Satabhavasya Satadhakalpita Satya Jiva Bhava Sabhidya. So Anantaya Kalpati. That is the dimension. In Shastra we get the dimension of the soul. Very, very minute. One ten thousand part of the top of the year. Just imagine. So that force hand is within the ant and within Brahma and within elephant. Therefore, one who is pundit, one who knows what are these souls, spiritual spas, part and parcel of Krishna, if he has got full knowledge, then his vision is Vidyavinaya Sampani Brahmani Gobi Hastini Sunitita Sapatecha Pandita Samadarsana. Samadarsana is equal vision. A learned Brahmin is most intelligent man in the human society. So, and a dog. Uh, superficially, externally, there is much difference. He is a dog, a street dog, and he is a learned Brahman. But one who is Pandit, one who is Krishna conscious, he sees that the Pandit and the dog, they are the same, because they are also the same spiritual spark. By his karma, he has become a learned Pandit, and by his karma, he has become a dog. But within the are different bodies. Dehi nasmin jatha dehi komar. Asmin dehi, in this body there is the soul. That is his vision. Of course, externally it is not that I shall behave equally with the brahmana and the dog. That is external behavior. 
But internally we should know that both the brāhmaṇa and the dog, their spiritual spark. Uh, this is called brahma-gyāna. Brahma-gyāna means the knowledge of spiritual self. That is called brahma-gyāna. So when one attains this brahma-gyāna, then brahma-bhūta prasanna-atmā na sochati na khaṁ sama sarve shu bhūti shu samata ipa. That is brahma-gyāna. So in this verse, Krishna says, Arjun says that uh, <coughs> Jadrajya Sukhalovena Hantum Sajanam Puddha. Uh, so when you are killing animals for the satisfaction of our tongue, uh, this is Mahapata. Krishna Arjun says, Ahavato Mahatpapa. Mahatpapa, great sinful act. Great sinful act. If we want to kill anyone, uh, any living entity, for my satisfaction, either my tongue satisfaction or any sense satisfaction, it is mahapatham, great sinful act. Uh, because they are all sajan. You cannot kill. Uh, either you take this sense or that sense. But Arjuna is speaking in a limited sense. He is thinking of his own family members. But if one is actually in knowledge, brahma he thinks in the same way that the lower animals, they are also our family members. Uh, and if I kill him uh, for my satisfaction, my sense satisfaction, it is great sinful act. Unfortunately, uh, Everyone is killing for his sense of gratification uh, in the name of religion. Uh, in the name of religion, although it is prohibited, is still they are killing. Thus, imagine how much sinful activities they are doing and how they can be happy. Uh, there can happiness, of course, a hawk also thinks that he is very happy, that he is eating stool, living in filthy place, and because he has got the facility of sex life without any discrimination, he may think happy life. But that is not happiness. Uh, happiness is defined thing. Sukham atam tritam yatta otindriyagrayam. If you want to feel happiness by your this blunt material senses, and that is not happiness. No. Happiness is beyond your material senses. Atantika. That is real happiness. Uh, real happiness means it will never end and you will never feel satiation. There is no more want. Uh, that is real happiness. Material happiness, there is no such thing. Uh, that is, you will feel immediately satiation. Uh, after enjoying any material happiness, a few minutes you will feel again another, again another, again another. So, therefore, in the Bhagavad Gita it is said, Sukham Atam Tikam Jatta. So, real, what is real happiness, that is not felt by this blunt material sense. So, what is that sense? That is purified senses. Sarvapadi Vinin Muktam Tatparatina Nirvana. When our senses are purified, Tatparatina, for the sake of Krishna, uh, when our senses are employed for the sake of Krishna, that is purified. Rishikena, Rishikesa, Devanam, Bhakti, Richard. That is one thing. So, here in the beginning, Arjuna is thinking in terms of his blunt senses. Uh, but the same thing he will do. Atantikam. Uh, Otindriya, purified senses. Just try to understand. This is Krishna consciousness. Arjuna is now thinking, Jadrajya Sukhalo Vena, for the matter of getting kingdom and sense gratification, I am going to kill my kinsmen. Uh, so it is great sin. That's a fact. If the uh, warfare, in the Kurukshetra battlefield, 
was for his or John same certificate satisfaction. Then it was a great thing. But actually it is not being done for Arjuna's satisfaction. It is to be done for Krishna's satisfaction. So therefore the conclusion should be that whatever we do, if we do it for our own same satisfaction, that is Mahapa, uh, sinful activities. But if we do the same thing for Krishna's satisfaction, uh, that is spiritual advancement. This is the different. So outsider, they think that a karmi is working for his own satisfaction, uh, and a devotee is working for Krishna's satisfaction. Although two things are similar, uh, externally it appears the same thing, but there is great difference. Whatever you do for your own satisfaction, for the satisfaction of your friends, that is Mahapa, uh, great thing. It's the same thing when you do for Krishna, uh, that is opening your path to liberation, back to home, back to earth. Uh, this is the difference. You have to change the consciousness, what you are doing, for whom you are doing, for yourself or for Krishna. This is Krishna consciousness. Uh, and that is the perfection of life. In Whatever position you are, whatever you are doing, it doesn't matter. That is confirmed in the Samad Bhagavad. Adapum vi dijasrestha, varnasama vivhagasa, sanusthitasya dharmasya, sanusiddhi haritosana. Haritosana means to satisfy the Supreme Law, Hari. That is perfection. It doesn't matter what you are doing. Varnasama vivhagasa. Uh, first of all, uh, whatever doing, it does not mean uh, whatever nonsense you are doing, uh, that will be accepted. No. Varna sama vibhagasa. According to Vedic civilization, there is division of varna, Brahman, Satriya, Vaishya, Sudra. So activities must be done according to the varna prescription. Uh, a Brahmana is ordered. To do like this, sattva sama dhamma titikha arjava, you should practice this. A chatriya should practice this. Uh, and a vaisa should practice this. So that is therefore it is called varnasam. The prescribed duties are already there. Therefore, perfect human society means, first of all, there must be this division. Brahman, chatriya, vaisa. Uh, and when they act, the duties of that particular uh, position, Brahman Chatriya, for the satisfaction of Krishna, that is perfection of life. Uh, it doesn't matter whether you are a Sudra or you are Brahman, uh, but if you act for the satisfaction of Krishna, according to the prescription of your position, then your life is perfect. Uh, that is one thing. The whole human civilization should be based on this principle. Uh, there must be division. The division is already there. They should be coordinated, uh, systematized. Uh, uh, not that everyone is Brahman. Brahman means intelligent man. So we should pick up the intelligent man. Uh, they should be trained as Brahman. Those who are martial, uh, having fighting spirit, they should be selected as Kshatriya. Those who are for uh, increasing money, mercantile mentality, they should be also collected, similarly sudra, and they should be trained, everyone, to satisfy Krishna. Varnāsama vibhāgas. Sānu sthitasya dharmasya saṅsiddhi hrītosa. So here Arjuna is a fighter. He is engaged in fighting. Now he is thinking uh, that is proper. He is Vaishnava. He is devotee. He is properly thinking that for my sense gratification I am going to kill my kinsman. Oh, what a great sinful activity I am going to do. Oh. Oh. But actually Krishna is not engaging his devotee to oh, act sinfully. No, that is not Krishna's business. Oh. Although oh. superficially it appears 
that Krishna is uh, engaging Arjuna to fight in the sinful activities. No, that is not sinful. Whatever Krishna does, it is not sinful, it is transcendental. The most pure activity. Uh, therefore, one, the, uh, the rascals who do not understand Krishna, they say that Krishna is immoral. They do not know what is Krishna and what is Krishna's action. They do not know. Uh, they think that Krishna is engaging Arjuna to fight. Oh, it is immoral. Uh, why uh, Krishna should engage uh, Arjuna uh, in the fighting uh, uh, business? Uh, so therefore, or why Krishna is engaged in dancing with the gopis, their wives and sisters of other men? It is sinful if we uh, enjoy with others' wife or others' daughter or others' uh, sister. Uh, it's not bona fide my wife if I want to enjoy life. That is it said. Uh, Krishna is not doing that. Uh, uh, but artificially, those who are nonsense, they see that Krishna is dancing at the end of night with others daughters and girls, uh, therefore he is immoral. Uh, that, that means uh, he does not know what is Krishna. Uh, Krishna can do anything. Tejya sāṅgana dosā. Tejya sāṅgana dosā. He, just like the uh, sun, is very powerful. As you see in this material world, a sun, a material thing, uh, and it is very powerful. But, uh, the sun is soaking water, uh, uh, taking water from the sea as well as from filthy place. See, he is also taking, uh, uh, what is called soaking or evaporating. evaporating, yes. Evaporating water from urine also uh, and filthy place where ditches is uh, evaporating water as well as from the sea. But it does not mean by evaporating water from the sweat, deep and urine, the sun is becoming polluted. No. Rather, he is standing that place, uh, uh, what is called prophylactic, antiseptic, by his sunshine. Similarly, even though somebody comes to Krishna with some purpose, which is not moral, but the, the man or woman who comes there, uh, he becomes, he or she becomes purified. And Krishna does not become immoral. This science has to be known by the rascals before calling Krishna immoral. Therefore Krishna says in the Bhagavad-gītā, manusyānāṁ sāsāsya kaschit yatati siddhāya, yatatāṁ api siddhāna, kaschit vetimāṁ tattva. These rascals, they do not know what is Krishna. Uh, they think Krishna is ordinary man. Why is engaging Arjuna in the fighting? Why is dancing with others, daughters and girls? These are immoral things. Therefore, uh, this rasadam should not be discussed among the fools and rascals. They misunderstand. Uh, although the professional reciters, they take part. Whenever they speak of Bhagavata, we immediately jump over the rasadam. That is not to be done. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu never indulges in such things. Uh, for Masa people, he engaged himself in Sankirtan. Uh, and when Krishna's dealing with the gopis were discussed, he was discussing among three selected devotees Ramananda Raya, Sarup and Sikimai. Uh, he had thousands and thousands of devotees, but he never discussed Krishna's Rasila in the mass of people. Never. Uh, that word is restricted. Uh, Krishna, because they will misunderstand. These rascals, they do not know what is Krishna, and they will misunderstand. They will be polluted. Uh, of course, not polluted, because they, after all they will hear about Krishna. But they may misunderstand, that is, against their uh, making progress to the spiritual life. Uh, so, Krishna is not immoral. Krishna is not engaging Arjuna to commit such sinful activities, sajana, hatya. No. Uh, Krishna is engaging him in his service. Uh, so one has to understand that. Uh, so when Arjuna will understand 
that this uh, war, this fighting, is not for my sense gratification. It is for Krishna's sense gratification. Then he agrees, because he is a devotee. Karishevatananta. Yes, I shall now act. Uh, this is the proposition. The Atmendra Tripti Vancha Dhare Tarnam Kam. Kam means lust. What is lust? Lust means whenever you try to satisfy your senses, that is called lust. And the same whenever you try to satisfy Krishna's senses, that is love. Uh, practically the same business, but personal and Krishna. So Krishna consciousness movement means we have to act everything for Krishna under proper direction. We cannot manufacture that I am doing for Krishna. Then there is another misleading. Uh, therefore, we require the guidance of the spiritual master. Uh, Krishna, Guru Krishna Kripa. That is Chaitanya Chaitanya Amrita. So you have to seek the mercy both of Krishna and Guru. Not that you have become so advanced that you are directly in connection with Krishna and whatever you are doing, it is mercy. No, don't think like that. It must be guided, it must be confirmed by Guru. Uh, guru Krishna Kripaya Pai Bhakti Latabi. Bhakti Lai So our business is, Krishna consciousness movement is that we have to uh, satisfy Krishna. Uh, that uh, reference by that Professor Dana, that one rogue, he did by his wings and he uh, alleged that after reading Bhagavad Gita violence, he committed this one. Uh, so, did he take permission from Krishna or Krishna's representative? But he does not know the technique. Uh, he has unnecessarily accused, committed a great offense to the lotus feet of Krishna. Uh, so therefore, uh, an inexperienced person, they should not try to teach Bhagavad Gita uh, to others because he has no knowledge. This knowledge has to be received by parampara system, even parampara praptam, even raja saya vidu. So simply by academic area, by knowledge of ABCD, uh, you cannot understand Bhagavad Gita. Uh, the Bhagavad Gita is said, bhakto si priyo si, uh, without becoming bhakta. Therefore, Sanatana Goswami has forbidden that don't hear anything about Krishna from a person who is not a Vaishnava. A Vaishnava mukhatakinna putahari katha amritam savanam na kattam. This is quite... Uh, you cannot hear, but the audience or the students will also do not know that here is a rascal, he is not a devotee, he is not a Vaishnava. Why should we hear from him Bhagavad Gita? The first uh, uh, condition is bhaktosik. Uh, and the, the prohibition is also by acharyas. The avaisnava mukhat ginna puta hari katha amrita samana nakat. Puta hari katha amrita. Hari katha talks of Krishna there by themselves, pure. But still it is prohibited that if it is spoken by avaisnava, non-devotee, one should not hear. Should not hear. Uh, must immediately reject. First of all, we have to see who is going to speak about Krishna. Is it a devotee of Krishna? Is he a Vaishnava or not? If he is not, then immediately reject. Oh, we are not going to hear from him. The, but people do not know. Any rascal speaking about Bhagavad Gita, we hear. That is not the process. Then we misunderstand. Uh, just like milk is very good food, everyone knows. As when it is touched by the tongue of the serpent, it is poison, immediately. So we, should, so we cannot drink poison. Uh, don't hear Bhagavad Gita or any talk about Krishna from a person who is not a Vishnu, who is not a devotee of Krishna. Uh, we will misunderstand. Uh, that's like a, they will say, then we will say, no, Krishna is engaging Arjuna for fighting, for committing so many sinful activities. No, that is not the fact. Krishna is engaging Arjuna, fighting, to fighting, just to serve his purpose. Paritrana, sadhuna, vinasaya, chudrasvita. And Krishna is executing the mission of Krishna, not for his personal benefit. 
Ah, these are the things. Hmm. That's all. Thank you very much.